Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time once again for Closing the Wealth Gap. The one show, maybe the only show that shows you how to close the wealth gap in your own life with the man who's done it for many, our wealth coach himself, Tyrone French. Hey, Tyrone. Buddy, I I tell you what, we got a show today that um, I'm really, really excited about this show. This guy uh, is somebody that I've been knowing over 40 years. Wow. Wow. And the topic of the show is veterans and financial literacy. And I couldn't have, have thought of a of a better guess than the guy that's going to come on today. His name is Christopher Penton. He's a force master chief, <laughs> United States Navy, retired. Uh, he has his own his own business. Um, and again, I, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, and I haven't let you get a word in as wise that <laughs> yet. But I want you to jump in here. And because this is just going to be, I just feel it's going to be a great show. Well, let's bring him in. Welcome, sir. Well, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Give us your name and give us your background. Tyrone says it's pretty impressive. Well, it may be impressive to some. And I mean, I, it, I haven't impressed myself over 60 years, but <laughs> I'm going to try to impress myself today. Yeah, my name is Christopher L. Penton. Yeah, I was a force master chief. Uh, in the United States Navy. Now I retired. I did 30 years in the United States Navy. And uh, explain, Christopher, you know, I'm so used to calling you Penton. You know, in military, we call each other by the last names. But, Penton, I want you to explain what exactly is a Force Master Chief. Yeah. Okay. A Force Master Chief, in the, in the military, in every branch of the service, they have uh, enlisted ranks, and they go from E1 to E9. And the highest you can get in the enlisted ranks is E9. And E-9 in the Navy is a master chief. And then you can also obtain obtain special skills and become a command master chief. And then you can become a force master chief, which means you are in charge of a, of a force. I was in, the reason why I got the name force master chief, that was my right, because I was in charge of the recruiting force. Wow. I was in charge okay. of recruiting 40,000 people a year oh for six goodness. years. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. So the force is actually... Uh, it's an E-9 billet. You only can have so many force master chiefs in the Navy at one given time. You can only have 14 force master chiefs in the Navy at one given time. And the whole Navy, wow. our million-strong Navy, or however many people in the Navy, there's only 14 of you? It's only 14 force master chiefs in the Navy at one given time. And it, it's broken down like you have the circus force master chief, you have the submarine force, you have the... Uh, CB force, you have a special warfare force, and then you have that on the East Coast and the West Coast. So, but you only have one force master chief of Navy recruiting command. And matter of fact, they only created that building in 2007 when I got selected to the, to the, to be, it was just a command master chief job when I got selected. And my point was, how can you have all these other force master chiefs? Yeah, did we lose okay. him there? I think he, we've we've had trouble yeah. with. Uh, we had tried to do a recording the other day, and he blew the lines out. He he's, he's projecting yeah. so much magnetic force out of his <laughs> magnetic personality that he's short circuiting the phone here. That's what's happening. But I'll okay, tell you what, I, I, okay. I, I, you so know what, I love what? I love public uh, television, <laughs> and one day I was sitting down uh, in my living room and I was watching a PBS special. Right, and the the special was called Carrier. Now this was uh this was like maybe uh just a few years ago maybe six seven eight years ago right and all of a sudden in the segment uh, of Carrier, I see this guy that I went to basic training with <laughs> Christopher Penton, <laughs> he was the command master chief of the USS Nimitz, and I ju- it just blew my mind. All I could do is just sit back uh in my chair and put my ha- my hands on the back of my head and say, "Wow, this I, I knew it from basic training." Uh, I knew this guy had the right stuff. So you're telling me that now we all know this guy? There's only 14 of them in the Navy? This was the Master Chief on the Nimitz and other places? The Nimitz is a big carrier. How many people on the Nimitz? There's got to be a couple thousand people on that. 4,500. Oh, my goodness. Yikes. But when you rotate in and out on a deployment, you may see 5,000, 5,500 people when you rotate out with civilians and sailors that's transferring and new sailors coming in. Now, also, when you're the command master chief of the Nimitz, you also assume the position to be the command master chief of the whole battle group. So you got seven more ships, submarines. So you got a, a total of about 10,000 people within your AOR, your 
area of responsibility whenever you pull into a foreign country. So people, I talk about being a command master chief of the Nimitz, but I don't talk about being a command master chief of the entire battle group. Today, I'm going to give you a little latitude uh, just because of your vast experience but I want you to talk about how we met in San Diego, California <laughs> in 19. Oh man. Oh, this is hey, this is funny. This is serious, but fun. Everybody fly in from different areas and you plant up a company. So French and I came down on the same bus and we didn't even know it, but we came down from San Diego. So even though I'm from Bogalusa, B O G A L U S A, <laughs> Louisiana, Bogalusa. I was living out in Inglewood for three months. So when I joined Navy, I joined up out of, Inglewood. So I went to boot camp in San Diego. So French and I was on the same bus that went to boot camp on the first and class up in the same company. Now, right. French is from Los Angeles. Yeah, right. I'm from Bogalusa. It's so country. I'm so country that the cows speak proper English than the human <laughs> beings. <laughs> they know how to say a moo. We may say mo, but whatever. That's a whole different story. So French knew I wasn't from Inglewood, but the stories I watched a lot of Sanford and Son, so I knew about El Segundo and I knew about how LA was structured. Yeah. So French used to let me sit around and tell stories like I was from LA, and because he was from LA, he'll shake his head and he'll co-sign. Like I'd be like, yeah, you know, Vermont and ninety fifth and blah blah blah. And French, no, I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> he shook his head as if I knew. And everybody else like, if French validate him, then he must be telling. Because French was in charge of the whole company. Yeah, we had right. 80 people in the company. And French was a, the lead guy. He was in charge of everybody. <laughs> so I already knew if I know that guy, be easy. I can get it made. So that's the story. French was the man. So you're telling me that our host, Tyrone French, was the man in your boot camp, and he gave you some street cred. He made he it. He gave me street cred. I got it. I was a. I had the BS. I didn't have the corn. I didn't have the cornbread to go with it, and he provided the cornbread. Cornbread every week. Oh, I was landing on big. So today's topic is about veterans and, and financial health. You sound like you know a few veterans. You ran a few oh. thousand of them on a ship here that reported to you or talked to you to get liberty and all sorts of other crazy things. You know these. You know this Navy sailor in and out, right? Yes, sir. Matter of fact, 4,500 people on the Nimitz, 2,500 people on the USS Bellawood, 400 people on the USS uh, Bunker Hill, 10,000 people in the region in Washington, D.C. Fourth Mass Chief of Navy recruiting was like another 10,000, 20,000 people around the world. So if you ask the question, well, if I know the veterans, Maybe I know may I may know one or two of them. I may I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, but let me jump in here because what I wanted you to do, Penn, was set the backstory as far as you know how far we go back. Graduate from boot camp, if you don't have an A school, then you go to what they call apprenticeship training. So I went to seaman apprentice, and he went to airman apprentice. That's another four weeks. That's twelve weeks in 1981 that French and I spent 24 hours a day together. Wow. Wow. So. I may know French better than his family because the family, your family, don't see you. <laughs> but when you got to live, sleep, and, and talk with somebody, that's a whole different story. So was but, he coaching here's people? Here's the thing, though. When okay. we when we joined the Navy, we got out of base of training, we got out of our, uh, our our schools, our service schools, and we went to the fleet. They started paying us, and a lot of these again, you got to remember these are eighteen, nineteen. I mean, Penn yeah, was right. Penn was that he was an uh, elder statement. He was twenty years old at the time. Wow. And so we're getting these paychecks now every two weeks. And some guys were sending the money home to their girlfriends. Some guys were sending home to money uh, to their mothers. Some people were just, you know, just blowing it. And so when you take somebody that's out of that, take them out of their element, you pay them every two weeks. You give them room, board, shelter. They get into the habit of overspending or spending everything from payday to payday exactly. to payday. Exactly. And, you know, what I want to do is raise an awareness. Uh, it goes back to readiness. You know, a lot of these guys, especially when in my command, I was in a, uh, a reconnaissance command and a reconnaissance squadron, BQ-1, station on Guam. But we would literally go to our, our plane would go to the aircraft carrier. And our mission was so crucial that I had to have a security clearance just to do my job. I was wow. a final checker. 
Okay. What that meant was that I worked on the aircraft carrier. And so when that plane got ready, there was a malfunction as far as the avionics and, uh, communications. I had to fix that. I had to fix the problem within five minutes. Wow. The wow. issue is if you are having issues at home financially, not only can it uh, disrupt the mission as far as what you're supposed to do, but you can literally lose your security clearance by having financial issues. Oh, because now you're susceptible to somebody bribing you or paying you off. Exactly. Or, yeah. exactly. With all of these bad habits, I mean, again, I'm not excluding myself. When I, you know, I had the best stereo equipment. <laughs> uh, I bought the Mazda RX-7 when the RX-7 first came out. I dressed well. Everywhere I went, if it was Thailand, I wanted to buy 24 karat gold. <laughs> um, just blowing through money. And what saved me was I had a, I had a background that I could fall back on based on avionics. So when I got out of the Navy, I landed a really good job. Then I decided to go into finance, which again, working for New York Life, I had a pretty good position. So income was never a problem for me. But when I looked at a lot of my brothers and sisters that were veterans that didn't have the same opportunity as me, income was a problem. And it started off with those habits based on that I had developed while I was in the, in the military. The only reason my financial situation didn't fall apart is because I had more discretionary income than I needed. And so today we're talking about veterans and financial literacy. And I wanted, we got Pinion, Pinion on here today because I wanted to get his opinion based on what do you think? How viable is that? for the military and commands to actually to be able to implement uh, programs that can literally help veterans to get themselves together financially while they're on active duty. It's a must. Let me tell you, I was sitting in my office a minute day and had to make a decision to put somebody out the Navy because they got behind on a couple of payments. Because when you have a security clearance, your whole life is about your finances. Or maybe they had a, yes. a they went through a divorce and now they're paying a little bit more than they thought they didn't need to pay, and now their credit done got mad. Now, maybe her credit is messed up. Maybe right. their credit mm -hmm. is messed up as a couple, and I have to put that thing out. Maybe not out of the Navy, but into another job that had a, that required no clearance. Now right. you got an unhappy sailor doing a job that he didn't sign up, or he or she didn't sign up for. Right. So finance, managing your finance is very, very important in the military because it's the gateway to getting the clearances to get good jobs and the military clearances, they pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for you to get the type of clearance you get depending Absolutely. on your job in the Navy. Now, gentlemen, I did not know that you could get kicked out of the Navy for bad credit, for bad financial situation. I thought you could get kicked out for insubordination or not answering, following an order, or, but I didn't know if my credit goes bad, you guys can kick me out. I can kick you out. Or I can give you. I can tell you. You can either get out the navy, or we can find you a job. That, but you won't be able to re-enlist in the job you came in the navy in. Now I can get you a job, maybe cleaning up down in Bergen, a burden, or being a, a mess specialist, or doing something you didn't sign up for. Yeah, but right. I can't keep you in the job, and I can't let you re-enlist for the job you want to do until you get those discrepancies squared away. And it's not up to me. It's up to the judicial system. It's up to those guys to validate whether you get a clearance. It's not me kicking you out. It's the system telling you we can't use you right. in the capacity. Exactly. We can only have so many of those people, and, and you counting against that man, that entry. So, Penn, let me let me ask you a question. What do you think needs to happen on active duty to solve this problem? Yeah. Because again, I never got the training. When I, I, and I'm sure a lot of things have changed in the military since, since I left, but I never know I, out of all the classes that I went through, the safety stand downs, so many topics that we would cover just being safe and, and healthy and, and, and making sure that you had that proper military ban bearing. But no one set me down and taught me about finances. No, that's shocking. And the reason why, Mr. Prince, is because that doesn't play a part in whether you turn that wrench or not. We, the military really don't care what you do outside of turning that wrench because maintenance keeps the planes up. Your finance don't factor into the military. But what we can do 
is to be honest with you, we know for a fact veterans get paid twice a, a month. So right. we allow this. We the only branch. We the only part of society that we know an 18 year old is going to get paid twice a month and have insurance, and they have the money at that time to invest. But we don't care about that because we're more worried about the, the maintenance side of it. We can just put together a little brief and make sure that it's taught in all the A schools and so, in boot camp. That so think about, invest think about this. 100 or 200 of your dollars. You're getting paid every two weeks. You won't even miss it. Think about this. They got this thing called the time value of money. And all that means is it talks about uh, money compounding over time. And the longer period of time you have, you can have a smaller amount of money. But if you have a long duration, then that money can end up compounding versus having a large amount of money with a short amount of time. The longer that money is, is able to compound, the more. And let me. the reason I bring this up, because a lot of service members, sometimes they'll retire around 30, 40 or 50 years old. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they're out of the workforce. You know, they're they're ready for the second half of their lives. And can you imagine that by the time they got out of the military, mature, 30, 40, 50 years old, uh, with a huge nest egg, now they can literally go into a profession or, or do some things to where, again, money won't be an issue mm -hmm. at that point. Finances if, will if, not be an issue. If they plan, if they use that period of time, that steady income to plan exactly. and save. But you don't know what you're supposed to be planning unless you plan on what you know. So, but I say that to say this, that even though, and some of the rates get bonuses, some of the rates get $30,000 exactly. for a reinvestment bonus. So you take, exactly. well, you take that money and invest, they got, in the electronic world, you get paid a bonus. And in some cases, if you open the golf, it's tax-free. So they have money. The bottom line is teaching them how to manage what they got. Exactly. I got to say to the go out there exactly. and get $200 tattoos. And don't mean nothing to nobody. I ain't talking about just E1, E2. I'm talking about E7. I'm talking about E8, E9. They don't even know how to manage their money. Mm -mm. Exactly. You know what would have helped me if the E, the E8 or the E9 or even E7 had the responsibility, meaning that they could not advance through those ranks, those senior enlisted, they wouldn't be able to advance through those ranks unless they had some type of financial literacy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That they could literally share with their shipmates to where I say, you know, cause again, they can see they're the ones, they're the front line. They can see when people, when sailors or, 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 you know, they're having uh, issues. And uh, a lot of this falls on the chaplain, the chaplain, you know, people have the chaplain, you know, the people chaplain have personal business? issues and they end up going to the chaplain. But again, the chaplain is not, uh, he's not your financial planner. Yeah. To handle but, 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 those type of issues. But I see I see what I see what French is going, but all command doesn't have a chaplain. See, the chaplain is only on big deck. You got to have at least twelve hundred people on board to have your own chaplain. Wow. So let me ask you a question, guys, because I sit in this chair day by day. We have twenty different business shows we create out of OC Talk Radio on a wide variety of subjects. And one of the ones that comes up over and over again is how ill-prepared veterans are once they're discharged to get back into society. I'm talking about homelessness. I'm talking about drug abuse. I'm talking about people who don't know how to translate the skills yeah. they acquired into a job yeah. out on the outside. And I'm flabbergasted because this happens all the time. People but, are, but you shouldn't be. Let me tell you why. You shouldn't be because their job is not finance. Their job is to put that plane in the air. So all, all of those stuff you're talking don't mean nothing to a guy that's right in his back way. So I could care less from a from a chief perspective whether that guy can put his shoes on correctly. As long as he knows the calibration of that aircraft. So we trying to make sure we trying to explain a military situation as if he's Superman. A person no. only know what they know, and most command matches don't get into the command matching program because they don't know how to prepare somebody for anything. But I'm going to make so one more not, comment. I never served. My dad served. I know there's keeping our democracy alive and going and protected. And we pay you well, I hope, to do all that. And we train you well to do all that. Why aren't we keeping you safe when you get out? We. Well, it's a, it, Paul, it's a, it's a system. It's a process. And it's also a mindset. And again, when I served, 
uh, my senior enlisted, they were more they were more concerned about, again, I'll say military bearing bearing as far as how Mm -hmm. I wore my uniform versus uh, my finances being in 4-0 or 5-0 shape. And I just think that, you know, as a cause and effect relationship, you see a lot of veterans, again, that missed that opportunity while they were in their formative years to create those habits so that when they got out of the military, you know, they had a foundation that they could work with. And and that's just, it's, it's sad to see that they don't have that foundation. Do, do, uh, it, do we do a disservice to them because we're providing? Yes, you do. And I'm going to tell you why. As yeah. a country, we recognize veterans three times a year, Veteran Day, Memorial Day, and the 4th of July. The other 362 days, we we'll see a veteran walk down the street that won't say a word to them, uh, not recognize they serve it because it's not a holiday. Right. So I think we got it wrong. I wish we didn't do nothing in the three days. Mm-hmm. And let me let me find something to eat on them three days, and you feed me the other 362 days. Let's do that. Well, I tell you what, Paul, uh, Paul and, and and Penn, you know, we, we we're coming close to the um, end of the show, but this show is closing the wealth gap. And it's about exposing a problem, but it's yeah. also finding solutions. Right. So, well, here's solution. you know, Pitton just, you know, what do you think? What do you think here's a good it. remedy of this would be while, you know, before we get to that point as far as the veterans on active duty? Okay, what do here we go. Happen? We didn't just put a brief together. We didn't go talk. We didn't go to the most base. We didn't put a brief together and go out to the base and tell them that we can help the veterans out a whole lot if you allow us to just give a 15-minute wealth speech to everybody that come to boot camp. Cool. We can do it BTC. We don't even have to. We can do it podcast. Matter of fact, we can do a training just like we're doing. That can, I can get it into the whole veteran system. Yeah. Because that's what we got to do. And then we don't have to worry about who's going to take care of who because they take care of. We, we can teach them how to fish. Right, right. Instead of just giving them a fish. Let's do that. Exactly. And, exactly. And that's what we're doing. We can easily do that. Well, Paul, since, you, again, you mentioned that you hadn't served, so I want to give you an opportunity to jump in here and, and you know, kind of vent a little bit and, and, you know, what's on your mind right now? I'm telling you, when I hear stories that veterans come out and are homeless, veterans, uh, and veterans have come on this show and said, not this show, but this station and said, you know, I was given million-dollar training to run an aircraft system, a guidance missile system, something else here, but nobody ever taught me what to do when I left the brand, the service. And they all knew it was going to happen. You you don't stay in there for life. 99% don't stay in there for life. So you know they're going to leave at some point in time. And why aren't they preparing these people to make that transition? I hear that it's so difficult that, again, people get homeless, they're broke, they can't get a job, all sorts of people that have that we've given high-level clearance and high-level training but we're not thinking through what happens next. I'm right, shocked. Right. I'm shocked. As, as a citizen, I'm shocked. I can't right. believe that's good for the country, and I sure can't believe that's a way to pay back people who put their right. lives in harm's way. I, I just I can't buy that. Well, I tell you what, Penn, I, I know you got a heart for veterans. Um, I, I just, I, I've been knowing you over 40 years. If somebody's listening, a veteran's listening to this show or somebody that's you know interested in this topic that we're talking about today, how can they get in touch with you specifically? Oh, they can get a hold of me on uh, on my website, which is uh, force-penton, F-O-R-C-E-P-E-N-T-O-N.com. That's the okay. best way to get a hold of me, and I will give them any kind of advice because the thing with veterans are we are humans first. Yeah. So we need to share. We need to do what I know you want to build the wealth, but we need to build the knowledge. We need to build right. We need a, to change our structure of how we think about it. So they can get in touch with me by force-penton.com. And aren't there right. – out? I, I'm assuming that there's a process to get discharged so they make sure your health is okay. And they must yeah, they give do. You, yeah, they make sure your health – they give you what they call a tap, a transition uh, uh, program. But it's, it's boilerplate. It's blah, blah. It's people come in from Fleet and Family Service Center and just tell you, oh, this is what you do. You go to the veteran hospital, you do this and all that. It's boilerplate. It's right. a cookie cutter. So right. you guys know. Let's imagine yeah, imagine if they added some type of financial literacy financial. Yeah, at the right. end. Ha, is, have you guys approached, I don't know, is this the veterans organizations? Is this the Navy right. itself? Uh, That's what you, I'm doing. No, it's the best. I'm talking about the veteran because if it's E1, E2, E1, E anything is the same in all service. 
And what we're going to do is I'm in the process of doing that because I'm big into the veterans. As a matter of fact, one, one opportunity they had offered me to be the secretary of veteran fair, assistant secretary of veteran fair. Wow. But, but I didn't take it because it was who I report to. I report to that guy. So I make decisions. No. <laughs> well, I tell you what, call me when that job is open. But the bottom line is this, that we need to give it to them on the front side. We need to give them to them on the way out. So I'd like to hear from your guests the last question I'd have is tell me a story of tell me two stories tell me the story of the veteran that you know give him a give him a name to protect him here and tell me a guy who should who was in terrible straits when he got out and shouldn't have been in that state and then tell me somebody who prepared and did it right tell me a good story and a bad story good I'm gonna tell you a good story right off the bat it was a guy when I was a command master for the uh in Washington DC at a ceremony guard now we bring in the youngest guys to go be Paul bearers at Arlington Cemetery, casket bearers and all that. This guy came in and he had just went through a divorce. So when he did his clearance, he was on the edge of yes and no. So he put down some answers. And then when he got to boot camp, his divorce became final. And they bought him in office. They said, you have to keep you out of the Navy because you didn't tell us you had these financial problems. He said, I wasn't, it wasn't me. It was my wife. They said, we don't care. We're going to put you out of the Navy. This was in 1990. This was in 1997. And I told him, I said, let me, you go get in my car. I was at the Navy Yard and I'm going to take you over to Anacosta. And I took him over there and I told him, you would not put this guy out of the Navy until we find out exactly what went wrong in his life. We're not just going to do that. Yeah. They yeah. kept him in the Navy. And now this guy is a professor at Georgetown University. Wow. 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 Okay. I like that. Now tell me, tell me a, a typical story on the flip side. Guy who comes out, seems like he had it all together in the military, he comes out, can't get his life together, and he's homeless, he's in trouble, whatever. Tell me, give me a give me a human story that talks about that, the need there. Okay, I had a sailor that got out the Navy, he was a, he was a nuclear, he had a nuclear ra- rate. So he's working with nuclear engines on a submarine or? A, yeah, I, I had a guy, he was nuclear trained, he had a rate, he was an ET, a nuke ET, and got about three different bonuses. Over over a twenty year career, twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars, and got the navy and didn't have a penny. Wow! Because wow. when he got his money, he went out there and bought a car. And sailors go out there and buy cars, but they go on deployment. They leave they leave their cars with everybody, everybody and nobody. And and next thing you know, the whole car is messed up and all that kind of stuff, and they still paying on it. And they had right. thirty thousand dollars. And we give you lump sum. We give you half of that money. And they blow it. When you enri- and then give you installments. That's the story. That's half for the Navy. So what did he do? He, like he comes out, he can't get a job as a nuclear technician. Those don't exist in the private world, or not many. That's what he, exactly. So he so he reverts to doing just odd jobs, and then he loses his self-purpose because he was like, I'm better, I'm better than this. And then he get caught up in the system, and then now he becomes, you know, now he just lose hope. And next thing you know, you see him, you walk down the street, he's like, that guy used to be a nuclear engineer, but what does that equate to civilian so, work? So what, that, so what that tells me is it adds a level of humanity to the people that you see under these overpass, freeway overpasses yeah. or, or hanging out in front of the, the, the stores that's, you know, or have the, you see them at the intersection with the signs, you know, uh, you know, veteran, homeless, you know, help. Don't assume that exactly. you're what you don't you know assume. You look at that guy, you pass him and he tell you a veteran, you don't even get into why he was why he's a veteran. I mean, what rate was he? He's a veteran and he don't have nothing to eat. That's what that's that's how far you go. You don't even care right. about what his rate was. He's a veteran. And right. it doesn't make a difference if he was an MS, if he was a, a ship serviceman, or he's a nuclear engineer, he's a veteran and somebody yeah. should be taking care of that. So guy. what do you do yeah. now? You're out of the Navy. I, I know you guys were working together and trying to create some programs of uh, financial literacy. The Penton, the Penton and Associates is about veterans. I just got that up online. As a matter of fact, I'm on my way to New Orleans hmm. on Monday to go to the Veteran Hospital. I'm getting ready to teach leadership training to the veteran. I'm getting ready to get a contract at yes. the VA hospital in New Orleans to teach the veteran on life skills, period. Yes. And the veteran going to pay, the veteran administration going to pay me $1,000 to teach a 10-week course wow. to the veterans. And they cannot say they don't have the money because how you don't have the money to get this person from life skills, but you had the money to use him to get to the country where they need to be because every right. veteran, 
Last question: What's it cost? What's it cost to train? What's it cost to train somebody in the Navy uh, over the life of their term? What's it cost to uh, get them uh, certified and all the things that they need to do and to get their clearances? That must be a lot of money. And then they don't invest a little bit to to help them on the way out. But they invest. They invest in them. But you have to realize that people go to different parts. Now it's up to the veteran to get the help as well. It's a lot of help out there. But but you got to stand right. on your own, too. I don't know if you remember that song by Sammy Davis Jr., Mr. Bo Jr. I yeah. can help a man if I want to have to sell. So we got veterans yeah. like out there as well. That don't, I don't put it on the veteran administration. It goes both ways. That's just the bottom line. I want you to go ahead and share your information as far as uh, somebody's, one of our listeners is listening or a few of our listeners are listening, and they want to reach out to you. How do they do that? It's C. Penton, 011 at iCloud.com. Okay. That's and repeat that again? Charlie Papa Echo November Tango Oscar November 011 <laughs> at iCloud.com. Every veteran knows that <laughs> language. Okay, all right. And that's your exactly. email. They can get a hold of you directly. They can get a hold of me, and I have... Now, I don't like to tell them about this, but I have the answer to all your problems, but you got to have a problem to want the solution. And exactly. you got to have a solution. I give you a solution, baby, but you're going to either cook it or freeze it. It's up to you. But there it is right there. <laughs> you're going to cook it and make something out of it? You're gonna it. We're going to wrap this up, Paul. Uh, a lot of good information that was shared today. And, again, uh, with my show, Closing the Wealth Gap, anybody can reach out to me. Just go to closingthewealthgap.coach. Or if that's too long for you, just go to tyronefrench.coach. But also – if you have an opportunity, most people have a, have a, a phone, a mobile phone, a mobile device. You can always download my app. You can just text Tyrone to 36260. Again, that's text Tyrone to 36260 or just www.tyronefrench, uh, tyronefrenchapp.com. That's www.tyronefrenchapp.com. Well, I think everybody should. Uh, that app alone is worth. It's it's free, isn't it? And you get all sorts of yes, information stuff. Absolutely right free. There you go. Well, let me tell you, guys, just say something. Hey, I'm gonna yeah. tell you about French on the way out. All right, please do. You told us if the story coming in. Tell us the story going out. Hey, it keep it PG now, Pin. <laughs> if it wasn't for French, I'm gonna tell you just like this. If it wasn't for French, I would not be who I am today. Because if you want to wow. know what I would have been in the civilian world, look at French. If you want to know what French would have been if he stayed in the in the military, look at me. So you got both, both, both military and the civilian. Both sides of the coin. Each other, lean on each other all these years to get to where we're at right now. That's just the bottom line. You better have somebody that you got riding shotgun with you in life that got your back. Well, that's what everybody who listens to the show is saying right now. I got somebody has got my back. I got somebody who's telling me the real truth. I got somebody riding shotgun here. It's this show and Tyro- our coach, Tyrone French. Pennant, I think you can actually uh, add a backstory to this or, or validate it. Paul, when we were in San Diego, there were certain merit badges that you or flags that you had to uh, to pick up based on uh, unit right. uh, uh, cohesion as far as uh, you know academics. When we went through in 1981, San Diego, California, we took the captain's trophy. Every flag, every merit flag, we took. Everything we didn't left, we didn't leave anything in the cupboard. <laughs> Whatever they offered, we took. We were one. Of, we were one of the the sharpest units companies that ever went through that training center. All the more reason people should take your training when they leave the military and learn how to be survive in the jungle outside those those uh, ships. Uh, that's the tr- struggle here. We we go to enormous effort to get you guys in there to train you to give a first class education, first class training, and then we throw you out into the into the sharks and say sink or swim. It shouldn't be that way. I agree, but no, but I would say I would say a lot of people uh, get they go get their college uh, degrees in the military. A lot of people get structured, but the people that don't get, I don't care if it's one or two, we didn't do a better job. So I don't want it to sound like we don't do nothing. No, no, we don't do a whole right. lot. But I, I, I want it to be known that if you want to get it, it's there. And the ones that can't get it, we need to apply, help them a little bit along the way. That's that's 
that's the best way to put it. Well, now I, I at agree. least know where to send people because I we hear people homeless stories, veteran stories all the time, and now we got a resource, we got a, we got a guide, we got a we got a. But if they north. come to me, they got to be ready because I'm a, don't come to me if you don't want the <laughs> answer. If you want somebody to BS, you go talk to somebody else. You want the truth, <laughs> come to me. I give it to you. I give it to you raw. I give okay. it to you. Let like I'd be like no no. <laughs> Problem. I tell you what, go look in the mirror and you'll find the problem 100%. Hear it. <laughs> yes, that's the truth. Well, I'm going to go look in the mirror right now and say, what the heck was I doing here? Thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming on, sir, and I hope you will come back and, and share some more stories with us. And as particularly, I want to follow your journey, you and uh, our coach here, as you try and coach ex-military to navigate these tricky waters. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Penn. Thank right. you, sir. Well, there you have it. It's not easy, folks, but there's help if you want it. You can close the wealth gap in your life. Veterans, you know, have them listen to the show. Because there is a way forward. Right here in Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio dot net.